Greetings, everyone. Welcome to Business Analytics 6354, Database Management, Infrastructure, and Architecture Online. My name is Dr. Mark Grimes, and I'm going to be your guide through this online semester of database learning. Now, this course is going to be a deep dive into relational database management systems, including database design, normalization, and structured query language. In this video, I'm going to be taking you through some of the details around the course structure and resources that you're going to be using. And in the other two videos in this introductory module, I'll tell you a bit about myself as well as our motivation for learning about relational database management systems. There are two very important places you're going to be consuming and submitting most of your content for this semester. The first is our YouTube channel, which hopefully you've already made it to if you're watching this video, but if you ever need to find it again, you can of course access it at this URL, bit.ly slash professormg. And do note that is case sensitive, or you can just search Professor Mark Grimes on YouTube and you'll find the channel that way. As far as the assignments, exams, and quizzes, all of that will be on Blackboard at elearning.uh.edu. If need arises during the semester, I'm always happy to have virtual office hours via Zoom. Just send me an email and I will be happy to set that up. Your textbook for this course is Data Modeling and Database Design, second edition by Umnef and Scammell. And fun fact, Dr. Scammell is actually on the faculty here at the University of Houston. So a lot of great resources here at your disposal. Now, as this is an online asynchronous course, you have a lot of flexibility around when you consume the videos for the lectures, when you complete the assignments, and when you complete our exam readiness quizzes. You can do this pretty much on your own pace. However, in order to maintain a level of control around assessments, we will be requiring that the exams for the course be taken at the times specified in the syllabus. So there are two exams, one in the middle of the semester and one near the end of the semester. Go ahead and take a look at the specific dates and times in the syllabus, and please reach out to me as soon as you can if you have any kind of conflict with that. One thing I will point out is that the course structure does not necessarily follow the order of the chapters in the book. So for the first half of class, we're going to be covering chapters 1, 2, 3, 6, and 10. And then in the second half of the course, 11, 12, 7, 8, and 13. Now, as this is an asynchronous course, that kind of puts a lot of responsibility on you for making sure you stay on top of the materials. So to help you along, I have provided a suggested schedule uh, so that no one week is completely overloaded with readings or videos. So I think this schedule is uh, going to be helpful to kind of keep you on track. But again, this is just a suggestion. Uh, you can consume the content more quickly or you can delay a little bit more if uh, that fits your needs better. But again, the only things that you do not have flexibility on are exam one and exam two. The first half of class is going to revolve mostly around database design and general data management concepts. So that's what we cover in modules one, two, three, six, and 10, which leads into our first exam. The second half of the course is going to cover normalization and structured query language in chapters 11, 12, 7, 8, and 13, wrapping up the semester with our final exam. As far as grading goes, the two exams that we've discussed will make up 60% of your grade, that's 30% each. 20% of your grade is made up of four exam readiness quizzes, and we'll talk more about how these are structured in just a moment, but essentially these quizzes are just meant to prepare you for these important exams, as well as 10% of your grade made up of four assignments and 10% of your grade made up of a larger SQL assignment where you'll be writing a few dozen SQL queries. So I think exams and assignments are pretty straightforward, but I did promise I'd tell you a little bit more about these exam readiness quizzes. Now, these are already available to you on Blackboard, so you can take them as you, uh, as you get to that point in the material, but they're made up of four or five questions from exams from previous semesters. So one of the nice things this does is gives you the opportunity to understand what types of questions are going to be asked on the exam. You know, good preparation for you. 
Now, as these exam readiness quizzes or ERQs are meant to prepare you for the exam, if you do better on the exam than you do the exam readiness quiz, then your exam grade will take the place of the exam readiness quiz grade. Okay, so ER2 1 and 2 prepare you for exam 1, and 3 and 4 prepare you for exam 2. So if you do better on exam 1 than you do ERQ 1 and 2, you can bring that grade up just a little bit. But the ERQs are there to really give you some good preparation for the exam. So at this point, we're almost ready to start getting into the material. And one thing I will point out as you're watching the videos for each module is that they always start and end with a number of learning objectives. Now, these learning objectives are the high level questions you should be able to answer at the end of that video. So these aren't necessarily exam questions, but they are the topics that the exam questions will be based on. So the learning objectives are a really good resource to be able to put together a study guide for the exam and make sure you understand the most uh, important parts of each module. One final thing I'll leave you with before we start getting into the content is that database design is as much an art as it is a science. And that's not to say that there is not a strong scientific foundation in relational databases because there is. Relational databases are based on the branch of mathematics known as set theory. It is very rigorous, it is very structured, and it is very scientifically sound and has served us incredibly well in business for going on 50 years now. However, the implementation of business problems and business objectives in a database there might be many different ways you can meet the same objective. Some of them might not be very good, and you might have multiple solutions that are kind of equal in how good they are. Maybe some will be easier to implement, or maybe some will give you better performance, or maybe some are just easier to understand. There's often going to be multiple ways to solve the same problem. So there is a little bit of creativity required in database design, and that's one of the things that I really enjoy about it. By the end of this class, you're going to have a very useful and marketable skill of being able to write code and structured query language. And I hope you find that as valuable as I have throughout the years. So without further ado, let's get started.